It was casual. It is casual. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're here tonight with Stephanie Hopkins on Facebook Live. And we want to welcome everybody. Please jump on and comment in the section below. Let us know that you're here. Say hi, send Stephanie some love. Um, thanks for being with us, Stephanie. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, so it was, uh, you know, we always kind of just spend some time um, letting people jump on and say hello and, and let us know that they're here. And um, I just had to chuckle um, before we got, before we went live um, of memories of dealing with two-year-olds as you're getting ready for something that you're, you know, frantically shuffle the children. So she's a very adorable daughter. Thank you. Yeah. You real life in the Hopkins yeah. household. Yeah. Well, um, we've got a couple people on. Again, jump on in the comments. Tell us hello. You know, be sure to ask any questions as we go throughout the broadcast. Um, things that you'd like to know from Stephanie or from the big reveal. Happy to answer any questions about the upcoming show. Stephanie, we'll go ahead and get started since we get started a couple minutes late. Um, do you have me open in another window? Do you have Facebook open in another window? Um, yeah, should I close it? Um, yeah, should I close it? Yeah, because we're getting Let's that go. go. All right. Better. Okay. So, um, yes, better. So tell us your backstory, kind of where did you come from? Who were you kind of growing up? And tell us your story. Oh, well, so I grew up a middle child. So I, I hold that I'm totally a middle child. Um, I grew up in Blue Springs, Missouri. My parents still live there. Okay. It's echoing bad on my side. Is it okay over there? Are you, can you hear me? It, it's kind of cutting in and out. I'm not sure if it's cutting in and out on the live feed or if it's just on our monitor. Okay. But you can hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, so my parents still live in Blue Springs. That's where I was born and raised. Um, graduated high school in 2005. Knew since I was a kid that I wanted to be a wedding planner. So I wanted to pursue that right after high school, and I did that in the form of starting my first internship, like, you know, freshman year of college. Um, so I knew that that was something that I was really passionate about and wanted to pursue. But, you know, having parents that both have professional careers, they kind of had different, you know, opinions about what I should do and what I should go to college for. So they, you know, they just wanted me to get, get a degree, you know, go go to college and get a four year degree. So I, I did that and, um, you know, worked at a credit union and worked in banking, worked at a credit union. Um, and then before I transitioned into my business full time, worked in commodities trading. So my background is in business and finance and did that, you know, from graduation up until I went full time in my business. But the nice part about the internship was it motivated me to um kind of explore the entrepreneurship world. And that was always what I wanted to do. I, I always knew that that was going to be my future someday, you know. And so that gave me experience seeing seeing weddings that they were doing. Um, that experience was just invaluable to me in the beginning of, you know, in the beginning of college. So I did that. And then I um, worked for Unity Village out in um, kind of like the Lee Summit Raytown area. I did that for two years, too. So I got both the internship experience and then I got, you know, the corporate side of working for a company and seeing how, you know, they execute weddings and balancing multiple weddings a day because Unity Village has multiple spots there that they can do ceremonies and receptions. So at one one weekend, I had like six weddings um, to balance in a day. So um, just that high stress of flipping rooms and changing things. Um, that gave me just invaluable experience as well. So um, it was kind of a collection of that. And then, you know, still pursuing, you know, still doing my full time nine to five um, for so many years. But I always had, um, again, that that passion for the wedding and events industry. So I did my business very part time, like eight to 10 weddings a year for eight years. And then two years ago, I had my daughter and I was at a crossroads and I said, I hate my job. I'm going to quit. Um, I'm going to do this wedding thing full time. I'm not going to just, you know, do a couple weddings here and there. It was just 
for, it was just because I loved it and because it was extra money I spent on traveling and stuff. Um, so I took, I took the plunge two years ago when I was at that, that crossroads in life of continue a job I hate or pursue something that I love, but I can't do both because now I'm a mom. So it was a very easy decision to make for me. Scary decision, but it ended up being the best one. So, yeah. And that's, and you kind of answered, of course, the second question, which is, um, you know, when we get into what was the big jump, like what was that moment in time for you where you decided and you said it was really about your daughter? Yeah. I mean, I think just because I was comfortable, I was so comfortable. I had, I had a great job and you know, you have that salary, you have those benefits, you have the bonuses at Christmas. So, you know, there wasn't enough motivation yet of, you know, it's, it's one or the other. I, I could have both. I could work 50, 60 hour weeks and then do a 10 hour wedding on Saturday and, you know, just sleep all day Sunday. I could do that before. And then she came into the world and I knew like, okay, that's not an option anymore. And I didn't want to live that lifestyle anymore. I didn't want to work 75 hour weeks. I wanted to have the flexibility of making my own schedule and doing what I actually love to do with the time I had. So yeah, she made the decision a lot easier just because I had to prioritize where I was spending my time. And I knew that chained to a desk was not it anymore. So yeah, Yeah. she made that decision a lot easier. That's good. Well, and you said that um, for the most part, like your husband has been really supportive, but obviously taking that risk was scary. And it is for a lot of spouses. Um, Speak to that a little bit and kind of how you guys overcame that. Yeah, I mean, that was that was something that we talked about for a long. I mean, in that last trimester of pregnancy, I was really, you know, telling him like, I just, can't, you know, I had already been talking to him about this is how I want to transition out. So he knew that the second I laid eyes on her, it was going to be a very easy decision for me. But um, I actually went back to work. You know, I, I took my maternity leave. I took the 12 weeks and I went back to work because I was like, well, let me just see. Let me just make sure. And he was kind of the same way. He was like, I want you to, before you quit a job that the company that I worked for had such low turnover rate, like small company, great company to work for. Again, even the day I told my boss, he, he said, I'll, I'll let you sleep on this and let let me know if you're sure I I resigned. And he said, let me sure, let me know if you're sure tomorrow or the next day. And I won't tell HR. (laughs) And I was like, oh, he doesn't know me at all because before I ever, I'm very, I mean, I think about things forever before I make a decision. So um, he had no idea that I was thinking about this for so long. But um, yeah, I mean, we talked about it a lot before I made that that jump and he was scared. So I went back after maternity leave knowing like my days are numbered and that kind of helped because I was like, this is not permanent. Like I know yeah. my day of being like, I quit is going to come up sooner than I you know, expected. So I went back for about six weeks um, and it was nice because he's got a, a job too that he got to take some time off work. So he's a full-time firefighter, but they have kind of funky schedules. So when they take a, two rotations off, it's six weeks. So he got six weeks off to spend with her too. So the first 18 weeks we were, we were both able to take time off and it was so nice to kind of transition into parenthood that way. Um, and it gave yeah. me that time to go back have six weeks before I said, yeah, this is not gonna, this isn't gonna work anymore. So yeah, that made that, that made that transition a lot smoother um, to be able to know for sure with everything in motion before I yeah. just said bye and burnt that bridge. <laughs> so not really, the bridge is not burnt, but yeah. Right. <laughs> I understand. And but you said when you did make that jump, you went from like eight to 10 weddings a year and it immediately kind of exploded for you. Because you kind I mean, of had already built. Up yeah, I, yeah, I had to make it. I mean, it didn't like, I mean, it did immediately, but at the same time, it took, it took time, you know, and I still did some freelance stuff on the side, just kind of, you know, trying to make some extra cash and stuff for a couple of months after I quit that uh, corporate job, because it's just, you have bills to pay and stuff. So yeah, but I mean, literally like in my business too, uh, I changed my business name um, actually just last spring. So the first year that I was operating after I quit my job, it was still under my old business name, which was Va- Vaughn Events. And that was that was my maiden name. So that was another reason I was ready to make the name change to my business was I've been married eight years. So I was like, I should probably change my business name finally. People are kind of confused by that. My name was never hyphenated. So yeah, um, 
so anyway, it was just, I don't even know where I was going. I totally lost my train of thought with that. But um, where was I at, Jennifer? I completely forgot. What was I saying? Well, I'll be honest. I got lost too because I thought I never realized that you were Vaughn events. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Squirrel brain. You just got me back on track. Squirrel moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was Vaughn events for eight years. And, but that was the business that I, that we did, um, you know, eight to 10 weddings a year and all of that, not like any money spent in advertising. All of that was just from referrals, people getting married. I mean, because I started so small, like, I started literally after an internship and if there was a Facebook group and a different forum that I was on of what of brides and basically put ads out on there and was like, I'm wanting to get into coordination and I'll coordinate your wedding for really cheap. And you know, that's just how I began. And so yeah. literally building those really low budget weddings, you know, that's how yeah. I started. So yeah, eight to 10 weddings a year for the first eight years, but it helped. Yeah. I mean, that was so invaluable because I know so many people from those eight years. So it's not like I'm just a new kid on the block coming into this only two years full time. I have so many yeah. relationships that they do remember me from six years ago, eight years ago. Yeah. So that helps a lot. Yeah. And, and you just last year um, took a new big step. Yeah. So last, yeah, 2016 was the year of just big steps. So we renamed my business in April and then, um, so I was working from home and um was driving you know around on one of my days off and th i love parkville and i was down in downtown parkville and saw this space that was perfect it was 500 square feet oh thank you mike you're so sweet um <laughs> i'm seeing the comments now it's so nice um saw this space in parkville that i absolutely loved it was a it was actually an old yoga studio nobody believes me when they come in and see that because it just doesn't look like it would have ever been a yoga studio the way i remodeled it but um, it's this cute little 450 square feet space in a hundred year old building, exposed brick walls, high ceiling, stamp ceiling. It's just great. Um, found that in October, um, signed my lease the next day after seeing it. Took my, I was really excited and I'm just one of those people who I see something and I'm just like, yes or no right away. But I need, I still need to think about it and stuff, but I had my husband come out and look at it and we signed the lease like right away on it. Um, and then opened in uh, late November, did our grand opening the first week of December. But yeah, out of that space, I do stationary, um, some stationary, not not a lot of custom stationary. We have some of the Kleinfeld's collection. Um, we're going to be carrying Minted soon, which is exciting because Minted has such a, I mean, amazing platform online that's going to help us. Um, yeah. But yeah, for anything that's like a lot of custom work, we send that out to some of our um, great stationary friends that we love but um and then specialty gifts too so people love that at the wedding shows of all the different gifts they can give their bridesmaids um gifts they can give their mom or even you know to who they're getting married to so we can special order anything and that's been really fun to add that retail element to it so and it's it's different yeah. i mean brides even say that when they come in and have consultations now they say you're just different you know, and I'm like, oh, that's good because I want to be different. And so it adds yeah. it adds that element of kind of curiosity, I think, to the brides. They see they see the page online. They see my stories on Instagram um, and they're just curious. They want to come in and see what what's going on in there. So, yeah. 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 So um, let's see. You were speaking of the retail. Oh, you said that you want to be different and you're and as far as engaging brides in workshops, talk about that. Yeah. So uh, just all these kind of different things that I've taken on, but I love each and every one of them. And I think that's part of coming out of the corporate and into my own business is I can, I can try things and just see what, you know, throw something on the wall and see if it works. But the workshops was totally scared to do, but kind of felt like there was this missing piece in between Brides that could pay a thousand dollars or more for a day of package, um, up to a full planning that starts out at fifty five hundred dollars. So I mean, not everybody can afford that. So even the people who couldn't afford a twelve hundred dollar day of package, they still needed something. They needed more than what they were finding on Wedding Wire or the Knot or any of these wedding resources online. So I kind of took a collection of the things that they were the most stressful for them and put it into a two hour extensive workshop. Did my first one, I think it was in March or February. 
um, did my first, yeah, I think it was February. And then my last one in May, I did four total. And um, from each of those, I've had such great relationships and got to see them as they're planning their own wedding. And then one of one couple out of each workshop booked me too, because they, they basically came in and they saw like all the stuff I was training them to do on their own. And they said, okay, actually now we see the value. We see what coordinators do. And we want to hire you. So that's been great too, because I've booked four weddings off of, I already had that revenue stream coming in from, you know, the workshop tickets, but then people saw, oh my gosh, I see what value now she brings to, to the whole picture and then hired me from that. Yeah. So sorry, I talk so fast. And Mike, yeah. I have both curly and straight hair. I straight. He, I saw the <laughs> comment. Random it, went, it went back really fast. I'm not sure, but <laughs> you have to let me know which, which one you like better, Mike. <laughs> I've been told both ways. <laughs> some people don't like it straight. Some people like it curly. So, and Random. let's see. To find out about the workshops, it's prettyandplanned.com, correct? With and spelled out. Yeah, it's pretty and planned. That's get, it, that gets confused a lot because it looks like a plus sign. But any time I ever put a plus sign, I think that's and. But you know, I guess mathematically speaking, never did good in math, so that's probably why I don't think of it as a plus sign. But yeah, prettyandplanned.com. The workshops are seasonal though, so we haven't had one since May, but I have a waiting list for people who want to do the fall one. So the next one is um, in August. So that one more details will be coming out about that soon. Yeah, great. Okay. And then one of the questions I always like, like to ask is, um, talk to us about your favorite mentors. You and I have shared a lot of these together, but yeah. uh, share kind of with our audience, who's inspired you and... Yeah, what they've given. To yeah. I have so many great mentors. I mean, I had a, a college mentor. I don't know if he'll be watching or not, but Ken Schuler was my mentor um, from the ages of you know high school to college, and he always encouraged all my crazy ideas when everybody else was like, "You should just be normal and just do just do a normal job." And he would listen to me for a long time. So having that was a great mentor. Um, but as far as people who are mentors that I don't even know in person. Um, Marie Forleo, I, I, she would be the person I would watch every Tuesday, um, even when I was at that corporate job. I just admired her because she's just, she's incredible and um, yeah. just love her videos. And she just keep, I love her because she's this girl from New Jersey, but she just keeps it real in all of her videos. And she's really quirky and different. And I like that too. But um, yeah, her videos were, they always did bring about, you know, something for your business and life. So I would watch those every Tuesday. And I've taken all of her courses too. Not that I've implemented every single thing I've learned from them, but I need to, but um, her courses are great. I've taken B school and copy here and all kinds of stuff she offers. So she's a mentor that I've never met. Um, and then Danielle Laporte too. Um, she wrote the book, the, De the desire map. Sorry, I talk so fast. So I stutter. Um, she wrote the book, the desire map <laughs> um, that like changed my life. Actually, it's a book about picking goals that have like goals with soul, basically not sitting down and writing a list of, okay, this year I'm going to go to Disney world. And this year I'm going to pay off all my debt, and, which is great. I mean, I have those lists every single year. I love to write down goals and I love to talk goals and that's something I love to do, but hers were more of tying the emotion to that of how do you want to feel like at the end of the day? How do you want to feel at the end of the year? How do you want to feel just how do you want to feel on a daily basis and make your goals align with that? So that's what the book's about. Um, it's a great book to read. I sell the book in my store and I also um, am a, one of the licensed uh, facilitators for her workshops, which are the desire map workshops of just the same thing of figuring out what goals you should set for your life. Um, depending on how you want to feel, you know, what are those core desired feelings that you have and then setting your goals around that instead of setting just these goals that really don't mean anything to you, but that, yeah. you're, not, that you're not pulled to do because you can't push, you can't really push yourself to, to something. You have to be pulled to that. So yeah, that's what she talks about a lot. Yeah. Sure. So if I were to ask you um, just one final question about what's in your future, Oh, my future is to continue, um, you know, continue developing just the type of weddings and the experience that I give to my clients. 
Um, I'm actually looking to hire another Kansas City coordinator. So if anyone's out there watching and knows of a Kansas City coordinator, um, looking to hire somebody here. Um, Kristen's in Denver, Colorado. So that's another expansion that we had, a huge announcement. And she's doing amazing out there. She's starting to book a lot for next year. Um, Cause that's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a start when you start in a new market that you've got to look to the, people are like, where's all the Colorado weddings? Are we missing them like that? You have to understand it takes time. So she's going to be starting out there. So our, our future is more coordinators and building that team of just great people on our team. And then also just the Midwest, I mean, Denver, Kansas city, and then she's got a lot of experience in Chicago. So Chicago um, would be, the next city that she would probably do a lot of weddings in. But really that's our five year is just to develop more of our client that, you know, the value that we give to our clients um, and, you know, the market that we have in here in the Midwest. So that's what, that's yeah. what our goals are focused for. Yeah. Well, and, and part of what we had talked about earlier was, that um, I kind of forgot the question that I typically ask of what's been your biggest struggle and and talk to us about that and how that has impacted how you interact with your clients. Yeah, um, well, my struggles, you know, are always feeling inadequate, feeling, you know, wondering if what I'm doing is enough, comparing myself to other planners, even planners that are friends of mine, you know, in Kansas City, in the market that are all great women, but comparing okay and, and what and what I'm doing different and is what I'm doing enough um so that's a struggle and then just kind of overwhelm just all the time um being kind of a even though I'm an a, type a person totally squirrel brain so I have um information overload all the time like that tabs 40,000 tabs are open in a woman's head all the time that's me 24 7 so um trying to keep on task is um, is a struggle for me, uh, trying to make sure I'm just spending the time on the things that are really important. So um, I'm trying to think of how I was supposed to answer this question as far as what the end result you were wanting was. But like, I guess what I'm trying, how I try to improve on those struggles is by just adding as much value and by being as real as possible with people. I mean, there's times that even in consultations or even in my meetings, this happens and people, I mean, people know that it's just Stephanie and that it's just me being real and authentic and they can, they can see that I'm just, I'm trying to give them as much value and trying to also be a real person with them too. And so that's how I um, try to overcome the struggles of just comparison and, um, you know, just wondering if I'm giving them enough value is trying to over deliver just by being as real as I can with them, becoming a friend. I mean, that's something that I, I want to do with every one of my clients is I don't want them to feel like, Oh, I have to sit down and type an email to Stephanie about question one, question two, question three. Like I want them to know that they can, they can call me on the phone or they can text me and ask me those questions. I want it to be a casual relationship. I don't want it to feel stiff and boxy about what they can and can't ask me. And so that also allows people to open up to me about, other random things that are going on in our life that aren't directly related to wedding planning, but that build that connection and that builds that trust. And that's what builds those referrals. That's how you get their bridesmaids business and their sister's business is because that you really were such an intricate part of their engagement, not necessarily just the nitty gritty planning. They, you're a friend of theirs now and they're going to, you know, they're just, they're completely happy with how the experience went and they have a new friend. And that's what people remember. They people remember how you make them feel. So even if you're total yeah. scatter sometime, and um, they're just going to remember how you made them feel throughout their process. So being that listening ear sometimes, yeah. Well, and I and I want to kind of bring it back around because you mentioned scatterbrained and overwhelmed, and oh, yeah. I think a lot of times that word can have a negative connotation. But for us as creatives. Yeah, it's, it's almost a it's a it's the driving creative energy that makes us good at our job. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah, if we sure. have that, if we didn't have that vision of being able to see 40 tabs open at once, right, we wouldn't be the person that our clients need us to be. So oh, yeah. I just wanted to kind of rephrase that because I, I think people 
misunderstand that phrase sometimes, to, like I said, to be a negative. When, when in actuality, as a wedding planner, it's a huge positive to have oh, that energy. Yeah, and because that create, you have to, especially on a, yeah, on a wedding day when there's 40 million people like asking you questions at the same time and some you're trying to put all these different little flyers that are coming up or things that you're not expecting. You have to just be ready to go with that. People who are a little too type A or who are all by their list, are going to be, they're just not going to be able to handle it. So, I mean, it's good to have that backup. I always have my printed lists. I always check things off, but you still have to be able to kind of roll with it and yeah, just kind of go with what happens. And right. yeah, so I don't think it's a bad thing. People who know me, no. and the people who hire me, they see that as like, they see that in my personality as a good thing. So yeah, I agree with you. It's, it's not a negative thing. Yeah. I like cake. So I don't, our hecklers. <laughs> Our, yeah, our we're the guys, we're the girls in the backyard working and asking if I make cake, which of course I made his favorite cake yesterday, so he knows the answer to that. Oh, is that your husband? <laughs> and then Mike, um, that's my husband. Oh, that's funny. And then, me. <laughs> um, so, so, do you do cake? Do you make cake, Stephanie? <laughs> no, I don't make cake, and I don't cut cake either. I won't cut cake at weddings. It's one of my nos. <laughs> But I love cake. And, I think cake's amazing, right? And uh, and Mike, I would I would challenge you to coordinate the next wedding that that pops up. Um, I'll shoot that out there. And but he did ask an interesting question. If you didn't do planning, what other aspect of weddings would you do? Oh, like in the wedding industry? Yeah. Um, well, my husband's always said it was stupid that I didn't become a wedding photographer. Um, but I have no desire. Um, and I always kind of jokingly, Mike might get a kick out of this. I always kind of jokingly say to the photographers, like 95% of my work is done after that send off. After that send -off. I'm getting an echo yeah. now, but 95% of their work is just now beginning. So I love the fact that I'm doing all of the work before and that after the wedding's over, it's like literally like just kind of following up and tying up any loose ends. But if I wasn't doing, if I didn't do wedding, coordination. Oh, geez. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's just this. I mean, besides the stationery and the gifts that I do now, that's really the only other thing that I think rentals is interesting, but keeping up with the end, like I know people who own rental businesses, Carolyn, and um, I know Jed at Celebrations and just keeping up with all that would just be so much I couldn't even imagine. So, but I think that's an interesting industry as well but i'm not yeah. opening any, i'm not opening up any dj flowers no i get asked a lot about flowers too people think i'm going to become a planner florist and i have no green thumb at all like you could point to anything outside and i'd be like eh, green i don't know so no interest in flowers no interest in fashion either i buy my clothes at like target and old navy so like when girls tell me their dresses sometimes i know what they're talking about but um, no, and I wouldn't be a DJ either. Um, no, <laughs> no I wouldn't be a DJ, but I love the DJ. I mean, I love good DJs. They're hard to find. Yeah. So I have very, I'm picky about DJs. Um, you know, no florist, but I love my florist friends, but yeah, that wouldn't be it either. That's okay. We, we, we have know. lots of really, really good people in this. In this yes, industry, exactly. So. I have plenty of people to suggest for those industries that have so much talent yeah. in that that I don't. I just know if it looks pretty. Like, that's the thing. Like, I can just know if it's pretty, but I have no idea what that is. So, You're just the like or dislike person at the end of the day, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. There's been times I've told people, like, I, I shouldn't say this on live because who knows who's listening, but I don't like, um, I think I call it Gerber, Gerber daisies. Like the daisies yeah. that are big, I say I think they look like clown flowers, like the ones that are gonna spray water at you. <laughs> so like I yeah. have told people that, or just like the burlap and like over country stuff. Like I, I get tired of yeah. some of that stuff. I still like parts of like the rustic country, but burlap and those Gerber Gerber daisies just drive me crazy. So yeah, I think I'd be yeah. too opinionated as a florist to I would <laughs> want the flowers that I like. Yeah. Yeah, I read an article earlier today, and then we'll wrap this up because it's it's pretty relevant. But um, about wedding trends that wedding planners are really tired of, and rustic was one of those. I think we all expected it to kind yeah. of die out last year, and 
Um, but you know, the, it's all about the bride. So I'm sure that it's, it's all about the bride. Yeah. You know, that's, at the end of the day, it is. Gonna be able to produce that, yeah. Um, and we're in Kansas city. Way. So I try to remind myself like it's the Midwest and yeah. that, I mean, this is cow town, so it's okay to like rustic stuff. And if it fits the venue, yeah. it's, it's when it's like a, when they're talking about doing an urban venue and doing rustic and I'm like, Oh my gosh, like it, yeah. that's a little bit too much, but yeah. Well, that's 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 a perfect planner piece of advice is right whatever you're going right. to do make sure that your venue matches you know what yeah. you're trying to build aesthetically so that's yeah. just you showing off your planner yeah. side so. yeah I'm trying yeah. to keep cohesive. Great. okay well we are out of time and thank you for being here i really appreciate it and sharing your story and for any of you that are still out there um please feel free to jump on and ask any um, any questions that you might have of Stephanie other than what would be your entrance announcement song? <laughs> She's not a DJ. <laughs> Ask Renato yeah. or Craig or someone else. Um, yeah. But thank you for being present as always, Mike. And um, Thanks, to Mike. everyone else, be sure to tune in and, uh, and follow us on Instagram. We do our Tuesday Instagram takeovers every Tuesday. And this next Tuesday, we're going to have a little look back at the history of the big reveal and kind of share pictures from some of the past shows give you some insights on what's coming up in the next couple of shows and um, we'll look forward to seeing you there. And of course we will be back here next Thursday for Thursday night live again. Again, thanks Stephanie. Thank look you. Forward to seeing everybody. It is not wanting to end. I was wondering. Oh my gosh, are you saying anything? <laughs> Don't say anything yet. We're still right. live. <laughs> Did our encore? Did our encore? Do, 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 do,